So basically, um, as you can see in the title, um, the focus here is actually two points. First is to um, try to look at the effect of different supplementary tissue material on the uh, shrinkage and creep of uh, SCCC, and then look also at how the existing model uh, predict uh, the, the, the behavior. So this also is a part, uh, uh, part of it is accomplished uh, within the institute project uh, 1816. Uh, and the report, uh, as you can see, report 819, that focused on mainly uh, cast in place uh, bridge applications. And uh, um, I'd like to acknowledge the, the contribution of uh, Iowa State University Cajun Peter Taylor uh, and Dr. Shaw for as a consultant, as well as the graduate students working in this project. So, uh, again, the objective is two things. First is how different supplementary sanitation material affect the uh, um, behavior of SCCC in, in shrinkage and creep. And uh, the second is how existing prediction models accurately predict that behavior. So, uh, first I give a quick overview on the different mixtures that was involved in this study, and then I'll uh, go over the test results and the prediction models, and then end up with some conclusions. So in, in this project, as, as you can see from the title, it focused on cast in place uh, um, bridge construction. So we also did a kind of a survey to look at what are the different states do when they use uh, concrete for bridge construction and try to basically mimic the, uh, uh, the range of materials involved in that. You can see in this table, on the left side, the different types of aggregate. So that includes crushed limestone and gravel, and uh, three common sizes in bridge construction, three quarter, half, and three eighths. So these are the sizes of uh, aggregate used. Uh, with respect to supplementary cementitious material, you can see uh, on all of them we use type 1, 2 cement, that's the most common, but uh, with, in some cases you use um, fly ash, uh, class F fly ash, 25%, others class C, in some states they prefer using 30% slag, and we tried at the end one of uh, the new kind of mixtures, which is including limestone powder, 15% plus 20% class uh, F fly ash. So this ended up with a total of 40 SCCC mixtures. Uh, that, those are the ones that we uh, developed and measured all, of course, all the workability properties and all mechanical properties, but that's not the focus of this work, so I'm not presenting those. If you want to see the, the behavior of all these uh, mixes, you can see them in the report uh, 819 of the NCHP. So I, I basically go quickly over some of the material, type of material used in that. So this degradation of uh, the natural river sand used in, uh, in these mixtures, as well as the limestone at the top and uh, the, the gravel um, um, in, in the bottom. They both have the same degradation of the three sizes three quarter, a half, and the three eighths. Um, for the supplementary cementitious materials involved in this, uh, here are the types of them, as well as the particle distribution uh, in these mixes. Um, if you go back and look at this table, we, we basically break, in, break all these mixtures into two types, because based on the application, you're doing a column versus a slab versus a foundation, uh, or a girder that has a very difficult or intricate shape. So you need sometimes you need low slump, others you need high slump. And we had um, the two covered, and he's just showing what ranges we're talking about. For the low slump, we're talking about 24 to 26 inches. Um, and uh, for high slump, we're talking about 26 up to 30 uh, inches of slump. So this is uh, not meant to be read, but just showing first the different combination uh, up uh, at the top, and uh, basically um, the, the proportion of all the material. The lower part is what give uh, a good idea about uh, the ratios. So if you're looking for water uh, to powder ratio, you look at the line, the fourth line from the bottom, but on the range, uh, in the range of 0.37 to 0.42. That's basically the range here. Uh, if you're looking at uh, sand to aggregate ratio from 0.45 to about 0.5. Um, so I'll just give you a kind of idea about the, the types of uh, mixtures, mixtures that we used in, in this study. So I'm not uh, elaborating that. Uh, uh, Dr. Hayat presented this in, in details, uh, the quick test, how it's done, the shrinkage. So just showing you a, a, a photo of the uh, uh, 
free test. We've done on uh, eight different mixtures. White shrinkage was done on 40. And the reason of that, we don't have many, many, that much frames. We can't do 40 free tests in, uh, in our lab. So we picked eight of them with the high space content just to be the most critical one so we can measure uh, uh, the, the creep. And you can see also every frame has also uh, um, cylinders uh, outside the frame there to measure the drying shrinkage so we can get basically the measured creep or creep strain uh, isolated from the, the shrinkage. So here are the results um, came for the eight mixtures. Uh, you can see in this, uh, uh, you can see in the top, that I list only seven. One of them had a problem with the loading frame, so we did not include the results here. Uh, and this is the one with gravel and the slag. So the other seven, you can see clearly in the left, the graph, you see the creep strain, and in the, in the right one, you see the creep coefficients. So it ranges in creep coefficient from about 1.5 Three to almost 2.2. Uh, two. Um, that's the creep coefficient with the highest happened um, with the mixtures with uh, limestone powder, basically. And these were the mixtures that had the lowest compressive strength and resulted in highest creep uh, strain and the highest creep coefficient. Um, and all the others were basically almost in the same range. Mm -hmm. Uh, if we look at different models, here I list the models we use to compare uh, the prediction of uh, uh, creep in this study. Uh, ASTRO is the main focus because that's the NCHP, but we did that outside the project. We looked at ACI 209, the B3 model, the uh, FIB, and the GL2000. I'm not good uh, over the equation, but uh, I, uh, as Kamal mentioned, that all of them account for the age, the time of loading, and uh, the the shape somehow, the volume over surface uh, ratio, and uh, also the humidity and the compressive strength. So here's a plot for, I did not plot all of them in one graph, so I put the three that basically get very similar results in one graph and the other two in another graph. So this graph that has a B3, the CAB, FIB, and the GL model. Uh, and uh, here's comparing the uh, measure the creep at the horizontal axis and the predicted in the vertical, which tells you that basically the models over predicted the, the actual creep. Um, I just want to remind you that this is different range of uh, SCCC. We are talking here about FCCC in the range of 4,500 to 6,600 PSI. It's not the high strength ones that used for pre-cast, uh, pre-stressed girders. This is mainly for casting place bridge application, and uh, the, the state DOT engineers prefer to stay in that range. They don't want to go to unnecessary high stress. So um, the uh, predicted creep was higher than uh, measured in this study. If we look at the other two, the ash two, um, and that in this case we used the uh, uh, used the 2000. Uh, ash two, but basically the same model as 2007 and the ACI 9 So they provide much better prediction than the other three models. Very close, as you can see, uh, uh, 0.91 the slope and 0.83. So with ash being actually the most accurate one uh, in predicting uh, the creep in this case. So looking at uh, the data uh, in a different way, so. Here is the data divided based on the supplementary cementitious material used in this study. So F, S, slag, C, class C, ply ash, and class F, ply ash plus limestone powder in the last one. Uh, and um, by looking at those, you can easily see that uh, uh, regarding all the models, the one that had the limestone powder had the highest creep, or basically the ratio of predicted to measure was basically the lowest compared to the others. And if we look at which models are giving the best results, so the closest one to one, here is we're looking at the ratio. So the ratio closest to one is a better prediction, and the variance here explaining the scatter of the data. So the ash to LRB and the ACI uh, is basically providing the better results than the rest of the models. So that's regarding the, the creep measurements and prediction models. Um, we didn't do a touch shrinkage in this study because, again, we are talking about uh, concrete strengths in the range of uh, 4,000, 5,000 
PSI and water strength ratio was close to 0.4, so that was not a critical thing in this study. So we only measured drying uh, shrinkage, and we did that for all the 40 mixes with, uh, according to STM C157. Now, here's some uh, of the results uh, shown up to 56 days after seven day moist curing, we started to have it in uh, uh, normal room temperature and 50% humidity and measure uh, the, the shrinkage. Uh, again, for all the four mixes, the left side uh, that has a, a symbol G, that's the mix with gravel, and the one with LS, that's the one with limestone. So you can see there's a very slight difference between the two when you change the type of aggregate, uh, uh, the source of the aggregate. Um, but with respect to the supplementary synthetic material, the ones with glass by ash is always highest shrinkage compared to the others. Again, um, these results were uh, used to, to evaluate the different prediction models. So look at the same uh, ash to ACI, FIP, and uh, B3 and GL. And they have uh, almost the same parameters. I did not put all the factors used there, but uh, just to give you an idea about the type of uh, models. So here is the, result of the results and the biggest scatter here in shrinkage, as we expect always. Uh, and this also three of the models, the ACI, FIP, and the GL, and you can see here from the trend, somehow the, this model underestimate the shrinkage uh, for these cases. So um, you can see from the slope of the line in the range of 0 0.8, 0 0.79, 0 0.77, and also we have high scatter for the R square around 0.6. Um, and the ones, uh, the ones that were close to each other, the ASTO and B3, in this case, and they even had um, much more underestimation of the shrinkage uh, than the, even the other three in the range of uh, the slope of the 9.65, uh, almost uh, the same in both cases. Um, so that, that, that means that uh, for shrinkage, uh, you, you need to pay more attention to the uh, SCCC, um, that these models are somehow underestimating how much drying shrinkage you get, and uh, that needs to be considered uh, in the design uh, if needed. So here's again trying to uh, is see the effect of having different supplementary cementitious material, the class F, the class F was limestone powder, slag, and uh, class C fly ash. Again, the ones with class C fly ash was significantly um, uh, higher than the others, uh, and you can see that from the value of the model that the ratio is lower than the rest. That's telling us, again, uh, that uh, class C fly ash um, causing higher shrinkage compared to the other uh, supplementary synthetic material. Regarding the models, the two that were really close to one uh, were the uh, GL2000 and the uh, CEB and FIP, one they were closer to one in terms of average than the other models, providing a better uh, prediction of uh, shrinkage. So, uh, based on that, uh, we can summarize some conclusions this study. Um, now, if you look at uh, the uh, ash to LFD and the ACI 209, when it comes to uh, creep prediction uh, for SCCC, they provide the best prediction compared to the other three models. So, they have um, the, the uh, Average of the ratio is close to one, and also they have the lowest variance, so the lowest scatter in the data compared to the other the B3 and the FIP and, and ZL. Uh, and when we look at the effect of the supplementary cementitious material, the ones with limestone powder were basically yielded the highest creep. Um, and uh, again, uh, I didn't put the compressive strength data, but they were the ones with the least compressive strength as well. Um, our the gain of strength was a bit slower than all the others. So that's why when you load it early on, you basically end up with higher creep than uh, the other supplementary synthesis material. So if we look at uh, the, the prediction of the drying shrinkage, um, uh, these three models provided uh, the GL, the FIP, and the ACI to uh, nine provide better than the Ashton B3, uh, which are, but most of them, or all of them actually underestimated shrinkage, but these three models had a better prediction than the Ashton and the B3. 
And when we look at the effect of uh, supplementary tissue material, Class C yielded always a higher shrinkage, whether you're using it with uh, gravel or using it with limestone. It didn't matter much. It always provided higher, and this needs to be counted for uh, in the prediction. And we, um, in the NCHRP project, we had some factors to adjust to compensate for these differences, so you can can be used to predict more accurately uh, the shrinkage increase. So here are the references used in these five models. If you want to look at where this model and the definition of all the parameters involved, you can see them there. And uh, here's my contact information if you have any questions. Be glad to answer.